Hello, precious one. I'd like to welcome you to our live broadcast service today from God's servant, Festus de Grafagri. I can assure you that your life will never be the same. You'll be inspired, motivated, revived, and empowered to excel. Join me as I walk you into God's throne room to hear his word. God richly bless you. Amen. You have been good unto us, Jehovah. We acknowledge your goodness and we acknowledge your kindness. Thank you for this wonderful in your presence. You have brought us to speak to us. Lord, we ask for your empowerment. We ask for your grace. We ask for mercy. Mercy to finish the race. Grace to fight on. We ask for strength, O oh God, to stand. Let our lives, O oh Jesus, be an example unto many. Shape us with your word. Correct us with your word. Rebuke us with your word. Motivate us with your word. Empower us with your word. Thank you for this wonderful time in your presence. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let all say amen. Shall we be seated in the presence of the Lord? We are grateful to God for this wonderful time in his presence. Hallelujah. Today has been a good day because the Lord has kept us safe. Amen. And we welcome all of us to the Kingdom Principles, which is our Tuesday Bible studies. Also want to welcome our Facebook audience and those of us who would watch the sermon. Hallelujah. I'm going to introduce this series, all this, this all-important series today, and next week we'll build upon it. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, and then we'll read from verses 8 to 11. The book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 to 11. Isaiah 55, verses 8 to 11. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it, it, it yields seeds for the sower, and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. It is absolutely important in life for everyone to get a guide in one's life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You need a guide. And I also need a guide. Whether you are a Christian, whether you are a pastor, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a politician, whether you are a student, whether you are a trader, no matter who you are, you need a guide. Something that must guide your life to enable you to have a unique way of life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
when you have a guide say i mean now in there was a yeshua the guy can help you skip the dangerous lines i mean now in as a way you need about to my water praise the lord hallelujah the guide can help you skip the dangerous lines given you know that life present to you za o ye hu a abrabon ozba wa kwanim bia the guide will help you in this way because the guide will give you prior warnings or information obobo o san de obobo koko ana obaka nsem bia chero that will make you take the right choices at the right time Aobotum ama afa adwun bi ewo mbra oyim adwun papa bi ewo mbra oyim the guide can also help you adapt to a situation to adapt to situations and change your plans quickly o mama etum ahweza we twempremprenele utwe twa hu ehia na etum ayensesa the guide can also help you save time za ehwe don tu botum anwono ma enke sember Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The guide can be a person. A symbol. Something that speaks to your life and gives you a guide. For example, for drivers, road signs are supposed to be our guide. It's supposed to be the guide of the driver. On on a driving in Osha do the 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 road signs will tell you that here you cannot overspeed or overtake. Eh ude obaka cho da hanen tu mungo emre cannot do do ane inzam pano waha. If you go against the pre warnings of this guide. You put yourself in danger. So we rank as an first house is one in centuries and nine years. You may one as on one two. Musum. At the end of the day, you waste precious time. A boy should own kwa. A boy say as a p. Every child also needs a guide. They are young, my friend. Me so ye hiya za all day shaduzi bobra. For you as a child to grow and become the person society needs, you need a guide. De ye bobo brana ya be yem pain foot to them a I wanna wait try and wish and open all the yin yas are on yen yen. And therefore parents and teachers become very important guides for the children. Into e my yin would they a church phone now phone one who won't for so pa ma yen more from every child who can grow and become that person society needs is someone who becomes obedient to the instructions. Of parents and teachers and guardians. Ebo ude obi abo tumwa bobran na wabe yimpa wohien wo abrabwe mun ebo ude. The teachers can be Sunday school teachers, school teachers, or whatever teacher. A church obo obo tuma Sunday school teachering ana new school teachering ana obi a a tourist. Also needs a guide. Eh, she be a way to kwan na oro koshe. No you want to all all way to kwan oro koshe. Mbi mbi a no su hiya obi odo mweni. For the tourists to have or to stay safe from danger and enjoy his trip, he needs a guide. De asambo ni bi angkoto ne ne you obeji bibi o tu kwan kwe koshe no hon odi bi mweni. Someone said, and I quote. Obi kai. No orika damasa. If you miss your guide, you miss your life. Unquote. Esha, yao kasa man. Ose se eshiri yao orunyano wona eshiri wunqa. In the same way, damara suna. You and I as Christians, ame na uye ye Christofi. Also need a guide in order to reach our home safely. Owa de yenyaza onyano han ame yetum. We are on our way to heaven, to the promised land, to the place the Lord has promised those who will come to Him. Yenama yar kusura himim yar koyen bosha sasundo baby a irazo washa hen bade. On this journey, you and I need some form of a guide. 
according to him to get us there safely to him the most, the most important guide for the Christian is the prophetic word of God. That's the Bible. Eshe, as in Ebo Ude, the Christian in here, only come sena, yamino come sena, or watch no women. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's the prophetic word of God, which is the Bible. Oh, yeah, yamino come se, ah, oh, yeah, throw some good. And that Christian also, or a Christian who also wants to reach home safely, go to where God wants him to go safely, also needs an informed, knowledgeable, and a spirit-filled pastor. Ebon wode, Christo ni yina, opodo otu tunna na mon kodem, sura hime mbosha asasina yameza asha hen, onhiya, osofa, sunsumunu washa nema, osofa, and since the word of God is the most important guide for the Christian, by asking yourself some basic questions from the prophetic word of God, you as a Christian can be rest assured that you will enjoy this Christian journey to heaven. And also reach your destination safely. Therefore, it is for all of us Christians to continuously ask ourselves is my life fulfilling prophecy or God's word? Or mm. they say, Or you ask yourself, Am I living my life according to the guide of my life? The Morobo brand was a Moshado Zebo brand Nara. If you can answer this question correctly, Sami Nawi in a Yabotume Yamas and Bissayan Yea. Your journey to heaven, I mean, now you are not going to Ezra Kosura, he may be very successful. Ye best zinc unimum, and you get there safely. Amen. Ye both drew her. Amen. Is my life fulfilling prophecy? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We read from Isaiah chapter 55. The prophet Isaiah, in the passage we read, reveals why God's prophetic word should become an important guide for the Christian. In this passage, we see God throwing an invitation to the thirsty from verse 1. We want to put to, uh, situate the, the scripture in it into proper context. So we see God invitation to the thirsty. What? God invites the thirsty to come and drink free of charge. Without money and without a cost. God then asks the thirsty a question. Why spend money on what is not bread? And your labor on what does not satisfy. God is saying that most of us are wasting our resources and time on something that will not give us bread. That's why he said, Come to me and drink and eat. 
free of charge, without cost, without money. Inti no se au obiara unsukom zeno no hum umbra isunu. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God continues or goes on to promise the thirsty and everlasting covenant. Yame or kodo or or no pede or ne awana skom zwani ya asem afebo. He tells them that as I was or I promised David. So I'm also going to make an everlasting covenant with you. God was telling the test that if you can believe my word and come to me, I, the Lord, will make an everlasting covenant with you just as I made for David. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God wanted to tell the thirsty that if you came to me based on my word, you will never regret it. Praise the Lord. It says you will never regret it. And I, the Lord, will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Just as I, I established for David. Now, for God to present himself for the thirsty to trust him, God convinces them or us or the thirsty or the sinner or the wicked yami oka me ye jinizi de ye ye christo ye ye awanu storm za han ye ye twaze for amanfra for unkofa yanten he promises his steadfastness to his promise osayen bo me ye wo de ozi no bo shadow he tells them that i the lord will establish my covenant and i will fulfill it o me ye wo de eraze ono osi no obetin tim na she na she mizin how, how do we know that God was assuring those who will come to him that he will do for us what he has said? To understand what we're going to talk about carefully, remember that God had told the thirsty that come and drink free of charge. So if anybody was coming to God, he was coming based on what God has said on his word. So God, God wants to assure us or all of us who will come to him that his words which he has declared will not fail praise the lord hallelujah so god uses these illustrations as we read from verses 8 to 11 to illustrate the surety of his word. That his word, once spoken, will definitely come to pass. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Hallelujah. Lord. So that is why we see God saying that as the rain, from verse 10, as the rain or he says, for as high, verse 9, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thought than your thoughts. As the rain and snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seeds for the sower and bread for the eater, verse 11, so is my word amen praise the lord hallelujah so god is saying that whatever he has said what can be aaron whatever has gone out of his mouth will not return to him void god would not say something 
and that not come to pass whatever he has declared that will come to pass until it is done the so word of him. God will not return to him praise the Lord Hallelujah. this is very important for us to understand that God is saying there is a day just as it is the case when it snows or it rains that the rain does not return to heaven without fulfilling the purpose for which it rained so it's God's word let me explain this again or in My another way more see god says when it rains so it must have the uh, it must perform the reason for which it rained before it comes back to me now, when it rains the rains fall on the surface of the earth it is either collected into water bodies or sank, sinks deep into the earth. In whichever way, assuming the, the rainwater was collected into water bodies, that rain, the scripture says, will go back again. How? Science teaches us that by uh, uh, evaporation water leaves the surface of the earth into the atmosphere so kobo esubontin akasimpoma osan ko yes then who osan there wa chere there say area no bo zinzinzin wa bra nsu na atwewe na ose nsu no da atwe san ko yim praise the lord hallelujah now this evaporation is aided by wind and temperature but this is how God's word, or this is what makes God's word so important and so trustworthy. See, once temperature begins to increase, or even the passage of wind, and then from above, evaporation begins to occur. Zayel can also in soon or or you sun fa or you a suicide cause. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So once these conditions are met, the evaporation starts. Say from above, na e yano robo pe in soon is a suicide cause. It is not you to tell the water not to evaporate. I will never say the mama in soon in then a suicide cause. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let's, I'll come back to this, but let me oh, check. Abado. Assuming that it, it didn't, the water was not collected into water bodies, but then fell on the ground. Remember he said, until it yields its seed for, for and gives bread to the sower, uh, seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Oma, abba, na, eh, now, the water that falls also on the ground or in the soil returns into the atmosphere through what we call transpiration. transpiration. Again, aided by wind velocity or uh, increase in velocity of the wind and temperature. Now, now, these are natural phenomena that determines water escaping from the earth's surface into the atmosphere for precipitation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But God is saying, that look at the rate at which the water returns to the atmosphere. But that condition cannot be met 
until the water has fulfilled the reason it came to earth. Amen. Insu no onto minsa nechiru mbawim. Jideza onamdo moten waiwi. So God is saying that whether there is increase in temperature or wind until the water has watered the land enough for plants to get enough water intake to be able to prepare their own food to convert into seed bearing that natural process will be stopped until God has caused the water to fulfill its purpose. Amen. And he, and he says that so is my, my word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God is saying that once my word goes forth, it came for a reason. It came for a purpose. Not even the conditions that can destroy the word or that can terminate that word can prevent God's word from being fulfilled. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing he can prevent God's word from coming to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. Once God, God's word is spoken, once he declares his what word, can, nothing can prevent it from coming to pass. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it is this assurance that God's word once spoken will never can go back to him until it has fulfilled its purpose. That's why we want to study this topic. Is my life fulfilling prophecy? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so once we all accept that God's word, once it is spoken, will definitely come to pass. This will enable us to trust God's prophetic word. And it will help us know that whatever God has said will come through. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is my life fulfilling prophecy? You should know that prophecy is God's word. Prophecy is God's a man's word. Prophecy is God's word. So once God's word has gone forth, nothing. Can prevent God's word from coming to pass. So, if the prophetic word of God has been released, definitely it must come to pass. Definitely, nothing can prevent it from coming to pass. So, you ask yourself. Is my life? Is my life fulfilling prophecy? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As God demonstrates to the thirsty, that the word of God will go will not go unfulfilled. Say so is my word. Today. Therefore, my purpose for starting this series or this sermon is to stir you up as a Christian. To motivate you to for you to examine and measure your life. 
the obetenya na na ya hwe na abra bona ya pese pese in the light of god's word which is your guide ya fa irazo na sam da ya pese pese mo ya na abra bo that is this guide that yamina sami taking you to the place god wants you to be on a hand of kobia irazo pa amen praise the lord hallelujah oh praise the lord hallelujah and then for you also to assess yourself whether your life is fulfilling prophecy because god's word will surely come to pass praise the lord hallelujah god's word is a prophetic word and from the time he created the world up to today god's word has never changed you and i i mean now as gentiles are seated in the presence of the lord and we call him abba father your friend yen aja not because you are so special not because you are so beautiful but you and i are here because of the fulfillment of prophecy praise the lord hallelujah because before you were born a prophecy was spoken concerning us a prophecy was spoken that God told Abraham a few you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So before today, God's prophetic word had been released. And we are a fulfillment of God's prophecy. The question to ask yourself is my life fulfilling prophecy. Every day of your life you are fulfilling prophecy. Whether you know or you don't know you are always fulfilling prophecy with your life. My prayer is that you and I I mean now will examine the life we are leading and know whether we are fulfilling prophecy or not. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your life will change for the best. If you can answer this question every day, that is my life fulfilling prophecy. This is an important question every Christian should ask every morning. This question, you should take it very seriously. Think about it. Sleep it. Drink it. Eat it. Do everything by answering this question. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me say this. You should fear prophetic word. Much, much, much more than you fear about the so-called generational case. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You should fear prophetic word more than ancestral case or whatever generational case, ancestral case, whatever as you say. Ozi yenanum wonder hello hi prophetic word will definitely come to pass my prayer is this 
you will ask yourself this question every day. I mean, now you may be saying, you know, the As I'm going here. out to work or to school or wherever, is my life my brother fulfilling prophecy? Or some comes to be my. This would should be your guide. He or no or ye yen yen for and lead you to your destination safely. No ozi and I don't think Kobe be a yerko. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. I mean sure. And keep you. On crow. This is only the introduction. He or ye so for so or ye name Zenara. Way he name. Hallelujah. Amen. Like I always say, when I want to start a series, I want to dedicate a full day for my introduction. So for so no be sad this you answer offer a da ozi kanen ozi chrezo ozi kanen. It helps all of us to understand what we want to talk about. Ma yet is a upper door chrenasi. Amen. Amen. So we are not running. Ti yam prepare. We are not rushing. One step at a time. On yam tempado, bro. We will get there. Yebodu. So today, in the, I have only introduced this topic. Ozi Abraham is my life. My brother, fulfilling prophecy. Remember Kai. that God's word, once sense. it has been spoken, can will never go to him unless Jide. it has fulfilled the purpose for which it was sent. Why was it in your mind? So you would always walk your work with God. Having it as a guide. Because if you don't have a guide, or if you miss your guide, you miss your life. Before. The Lord bless you and keep you. On crying. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for a wonderful time like this. We have studied your word. It's my life fulfilling prophecy. We have seen that your word, once spoken, will never come to you void until it has fulfilled the reason and the purpose for which it was spoken. Many are the prophetic words you have declared. My prayer is that Lord help us to fulfill those we have to. Help us to escape those we don't have to. So we'll get to our destination safely. Having the word of God as our guide. We honor you and we give you praise. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So next week, we'll get into this topic proper. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming. The Lord richly bless you.